Good day guys. Just finishing off another GPZ, GPZ, whatever, 7,000. And yeah, just got some new parts in. I'm trying out some uh, better um, component changes on this detector. And I think that it's going to be a real winner. A, a real winner. I've just done the receive module. Um, remember before I was saying about the receive module that uh, because it was hermetically sealed, you can't do anything uh, to the module. Well, that's not entirely correct. Uh, you can do things to that module, but you use the external control pins. Anyway, we can do a few more things to these 7000s and basically get them quieter, um, but not lose anything in the sensitivity. Actually, you'll probably find that the sensitivity increases when we make these quieter because we're not doing anything to lower the gain to make it quieter. We're just... Uh, doing some other things to the circuitry to make it quieter. So I'm not gonna give um, the whole game away. You gotta remember, I spend hours and hours and hours doing stuff, experimenting, uh, trying this, trying that, trying a lot of different things to just see if we can get a performance benefit. And, you know, if it doesn't uh, in, improve the performance, well, you know, I, I don't do it. So this one uh, is ready to go back in and uh, we'll see how it goes. I've got, I've got some other ideas um, I can do on this one as well, but I'm gonna check what I've done so far. I'm gonna put it back together and uh, take it out for a field test. But there's some glaring things that I really think are obvious that maybe should be done and it's sometimes on this thing on these detectors it's it's like you know it's like flipping a coin you know you may think oh if i do that and i do that that'll that'll improve that because you know damn well it will but will it have any effect on the operational capability of the detector and if not why bother you know if you've got uh, something going on in the circuit board well I'm trying to say this in layman's terms so everyone can understand. Say, say you got something on the circuit board and it's it's making a bit of spurious noise or something of that nature, and you know something you know what you you'd look at and you'd say oh that's not quite right and you know there's plenty of plenty of electronic stuff out there in the marketplace, anything from a toaster to a you know big screen TV um, that could be optimized in some way but you know if it's not going to affect the operation in any way why bother doing it it's um what how can i say say um you know this had a noisy power supply and uh yeah because it's, it's, there are switch mode supplies on the board and switch modes uh chop dc basically they chop it up and into square waves you want to make sure that uh, when you have square waves they they um, create harmonics and they generate spurious noise you've got uh, inductors and there's you know electromagnetic radiation from those you know and you say to yourself is any of that in the receive pass band is it getting into the receiver is it um, you know putting jitter in the ADC lines is it doing this is it doing that and you could test you know, thousands of things on these and just see if anything's um, happening. But you might find it, but, you know, if you do go to all the trouble of uh, cleaning it up, it may make no difference. It's just not affecting uh, that part of the circuitry. So, you know, you, you can improve anything, but if it's not worthwhile, don't do it. But I have done side-by-side -side testing on the um, current improvements well 
alterations. How's, is that a better word? Alterations? Um, modifications? Um, whatever, whatever terminology you want to use. If it improves the performance out in the field, side by side testing, um, then it's worthwhile. So this one, I'm going to do a little bit more to it. And I'm going to uh, compare to my other yardsticks and see where we get to performance wise. A lot of it is to do with just noise in general, trying to get the noise floor down. And so we'll just see how we go with this. You drop the noise floor, uh, signals poke their heads up. Just remember that, you know, it's, um, it can be a really big improvement, uh, more so than cranking up the gain um, and stuff like that. It, it just, everything has to be a balance. It, it, you can't just crank everything up and hope for the best, you know. It's not like a, a home hi-fi that you can turn the volume knob up. It doesn't work that way. It, you got to take a lot of stuff into account. It's very easy to add too much amplification and it won't work on hot ground no more. Um, very much so like uh, um, some other detectors in the past that uh, did not like hot ground. And uh, yeah, the person involved didn't believe it till he saw it, then he believed it, then he fixed it. But this this should go like an absolute house on fire. I'll get it back together, and when I put it all back together, we'll uh, give it a field test. And I've probably got some other detectors I want to take out and do a field test as well. These are, um, we've got some more 6,000s to do. And if you look over in the corner, there's, there's actually another four five thousands have come in today if you look over where are we over there somewhere sitting there on the corner shelf so yeah these detectors just keep coming in uh now it used to be it used to be a bit of a secret but uh, i think it's out of the the bag well and truly now that all these detectors can be uh, greatly improved um the designs on those are, you know, fairly old now. Even though there's one there looks brand new, which is <laughs> really, really amazing. It actually looks brand new. That There's one there, if you can see it. Um, but, uh, yeah, they all need, uh, well, they can all have new bits and pieces added. Um, you know, older technology swapped out. There's uh, a lot of things you can do. Um, new chips become available, the improved versions of uh, particular IC chips um, become available. And again, this is all, um, usually the um, improvements on semiconductors is power consumption, speed, and in a lot of cases, lower noise figures, right? And that is definitely something you want to aim at if it's anything to do with the signal processing part of the detector, the receiver, anything like that. Uh, if you can get lower noise, you know, the earlier up the chain you came to the coil, the better, of course. But, uh, you know, just get rid of... It's like a hi-fi. You know, you turn it up with no signal source and you hear this hiss. You want the hiss to go away because then you can hear little signals and the hiss is covering it up. Sort of same thing. I'm trying to just say it and, you know terms that you can easy understand uh, so that that's basically the noise you're trying to get rid of and uh, the electronics will hear that that hiss and any signals under that it won't process so if you can get rid of the hiss the signals are there you can process it so you can get uh, bigger deeper targets you can get smaller hard to hear targets uh, everything is well um, you know much better defined as a target signal and basically you're hearing stuff you'd normally just walk over the top of because the detectors just can't detect it. So this is the crux of the matter. Getting the noise out of the system, lowering the noise floor um, as far as you can and, uh, you know, getting some useful signal then, you know, manipulating it, processing it so you can hear it. So 
I will be just finishing this off and I'll be putting it back together and uh, we'll go out for some testing. So hopefully I'll get uh, one of the sixes done as well and we can take that out and do some side by side comparisons. Um, and I'll probably get a, I'll see if I can get one of the other, uh, well, I'll get that newish looking GPX 5000 over there done as well. And we can do some comparisons uh, between all detectors. Uh, you'd be surprised that uh, the GPX 5 with uh, some, you know, good upgrades uh, is a bit of an eye opener. But, uh, you know, we'll leave it to um, proof. Proof is in the pudding, isn't it? Uh, we'll get it all put together and sort it out and go and do some side by sides. I hope Dave can help me. Uh, yeah, been doing some late nighters and uh, <laughs> yeah, half asleep, but we'll get there, we'll get this done and uh, see how we go. So, um, there's something else I was going to mention too. What was it? There's something to do with a previous video. I said something in one of the videos, and I realized I said I shouldn't have said that, I should have said something else, but uh, now I can't remember what it was. <laughs> uh, dear me. Um, oh, that's right, it was too. Um, that that one on that um, big muller keep a couple of videos ago, I finally nutted it out. Uh, well, a fellow actually twigged me to it. He, he put some uh, comments in under the, under the thing. It was back in uh, 1860-something or 1870-something. There's a fellow who was... Um, his name was Hollard. Hollard Smith, and he was a general or brigadier general or something or other, and he, and uh, I think he um, possibly might have come from South Africa. He visited Ballarat in the 1800s at one point, and the mayor of the town um, built steps and uh, railing up that huge muller keep that's probably why it's scooped out a bit because it had st uh, wooden steps and railing put in there and um, a bit of a viewing platform. Must have been before the time of the uh, pine trees obscuring the view. And for some reason, there's a big thing about it. And, and uh, the mayor at the time um, renamed that Mullochite Mount Hollard Smith. So it's named after this army guy. Um, and... Uh, yeah, anyway, it was probably a publicity stunt of some sort at the time. And uh, that's why they call it that, where I call it, uh, you know, Band of Hope number four. <laughs> but anyway, that's quite funny, isn't it? Uh, history, history is a funny thing when you uh, delve back into it. Hey, speaking of history, no, I'm not going to go on about it. No, see, I, I'm getting off track. But anyway, I'm going to do this detector. I'll do history lessons another um, time there's some really interesting stuff uh, out of the late 1800s about uh, the Ballarat goldfields give you an, in, uh, an interesting one I thought all the uh, measurements um, were in feet uh, they weren't they're in meters and uh, when I was saying things went down 250 feet um, it's actually 400 feet and the deepest mine sank down in, was, is it sank or sunk? It's past tense, sunk. Sunk in Ballarat was 950 feet, not metres, but that's a long way down, 950 feet. Shows you how far down the old stream beds are here, um, you know, in certain parts, the old gutters, they called them. And there's also um, some quartz, mines that were, uh, well, they probably weren't quartz mines to start with, but they intercepted quartz going down looking for these gutters, and the, the quartz was quite rich in uh, places. But I was reading up some uh, mining accounts of the old mines from written um, reports from the 1800s, and some of it's great detail. And, you know, the um, all the ups and downs of gold mining and, you know, people losing their shirts and uh, people making big wins. It's just amazing stuff. Anyway, that's enough of that. 
save it for another day. If you want to know anything about that sort of stuff, um, leave it in the comments. And by the way, um, I don't know if anyone's realised this. If you, if you, um, uh, something, something's happened to the algorithm with uh, YouTube, and people are becoming automatically unsubscribed from my channel for some reason. I don't know why. Um, may, maybe I did something stupid and hit a setting or something and did it wrongly. Um, did something, I don't know. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. But uh, yeah, it's sort of um, it's very interesting. Like it says it says on the uh, thing, there's 11,000 something Arava subscribers. And if you have a look at the views on the videos, uh, it's only in the hundreds. Uh, it does go up eventually over a period of, uh, a, you know, a couple of weeks, it'll be in the thousands or whatever. But, you know, a lot of other people have less subscribers and they put out a video and they get thousands of hits on it straight away. And my ones don't. So maybe maybe people hate the electronic aspect of prospecting and no one's interested. But then again, you know... I don't know why you wouldn't be interested in trying to get a leg up on everyone else um, through technology. I don't know. I just don't know um, why. I have no idea. If anybody knows if I got something set up wrong in YouTube, let me know. Um, you know, it might be, oh, I forgot to tick that box or I didn't do this or I didn't do that. I really don't know. There's something funny going on there. Um, anyway, hopefully it all works itself out. Better get on to finishing this, that, I mean that, down there. See, I was going to point the camera at it, but I can't. There we go, on to that. And, uh, yeah, clean him up, polish it off and uh, put it back together. Anyway, catch us later.